We, the people of the United States of America, are now the proud owners of the largest aircraft carrier in the world. The President of the United States went to the commissioning of that aircraft carrier this weekend. It is named the Gerald R. Ford. President Trump said nothing in his remarks about how Gerald R. Ford became President of the United States, nothing about Gerald R. Ford never having actually been elected president, but simply rising to the office after Richard Nixon resigned rather than face impeachment in the House of Representatives and a trial in the United States Senate at which President Nixon would most assuredly have been found guilty and removed from office on the basis of information discovered and developed into a series of criminal cases by a special prosecutor. That's how Gerald Ford became president. Was not mentioned at the naming and commissioning of that aircraft carrier in Gerald R. Ford's name. It was exactly the kind of special prosecutor that President Trump and his family and campaign associates are facing now. Donald Trump may be driven to distraction by the special prosecutor. Donald Trump may be provoked into bursts of Twitter madness by the special prosecutor. But no one in Trump world is taking the special prosecutor more seriously than the president's son-in-law and completely inexperienced campaign advisor and now completely inexperienced White House advisor Jared Kushner. We know Jared Kushner is taking it more seriously than the president because Jared Kushner has better lawyers than the president. Jared Kushner has Washington lawyer Abby Lowell defending him. No one in the Trump-Russia investigation has a better lawyer than Jared Kushner does. Abby Lowell has defended senators and presidential candidates like John Edwards, powerful congressional committee chairman like Dan Rostenkowski, and at least one Speaker of the House. And Abby Lowell served as counsel to the Democrats on the House Judiciary Committee when the committee considered and voted on articles of impeachment against President Bill Clinton. Alone among the defense lawyers in the Trump-Russia investigation, Abby Lowell has experience defending a president in an impeachment proceeding. But he's not defending Donald Trump now. He's defending Donald Trump's son-in-law, who met with the staff of the Senate Intelligence Committee today to discuss his meetings with Russian government officials and associates of the Russian government during the presidential campaign and during the transition. And in a written statement to the committee that was made public, Jared Kushner said that he could not recall and could not find any records of two phone calls with the Russian ambassador, Sergei Kislyak, that the Reuters News Service reported occurred during the campaign. He said he did not disclose a meeting he had with the Russian, with the Russian lawyer and several other Russians arranged by Donald Trump Jr. on June 9th of last year. Jared Kushner said he had forgotten about that meeting when he was filling out his application for a security clearance and did not include it as one of the necessary disclosures in that form. He apparently did remember the meeting well enough, though, to tell the committee today that, quote, the meeting was a waste of our time, end quote. The emails sent to him to schedule the meeting were entitled Russia, Clinton, Private and Confidential. In his written statement to the committee today, Jared Kushner did not mention the title of those emails, but he did say, I did not read or recall this email exchange before it was shown to me by my lawyers. Today, Jared Kushner described to the committee, a December, December 1st meeting in Trump Tower with the Russian ambassador that was also attended by former General Michael Flynn, who became President Trump's first national security advisor before being fired by the president for lying about his contacts with Russian officials. Jared Kushner told the committee staff today, I did not request a, a secret back channel. I did not suggest an ongoing secret form of communication for then or for when the administration took office. The Washington Post has reported that, quote, Jared Kushner and Russia's ambassador to Washington discussed the possibility of setting up a secret and secure communications channel between Trump's transition team and the Kremlin using Russian diplomatic facilities in an apparent move to shield their pre-inauguration discussions from monitoring, according to U.S. officials briefed on intelligence reports. On December 13th, Jared Kushner had a meeting with a Russian banker 
who he was told had direct communication with Vladimir Putin. Kushner said that the meeting with that banker, Sergei Gorkov, lasted 20 to 25 minutes. And in his written statement today, Jared Kushner said, at no time was there any discussion about my company's business transactions, real estate projects, loans, banking arrangements, or any private business of any kind. I did not know or have any contact with Mr. Gorkov before that meeting, and I have had no reason to connect with him since. Jared Kushner's explanation for why his security clearance application was submitted without any disclosures of any meetings with any foreign officials was, my assistant did it. That's it. That's the whole explanation. He actually blamed his assistant for sending in an incomplete version of the form. But Jared Kushner's signature is required not just on the last page of the form, but on the last four pages of the form. His signature is required, let's see, right here, and then let's see, right here, and then again, up here, above the signature of the person who examines this form. And then, on the final page, right here again. Four times. You sign it four times at the end of this form. In the private questioning of Jared Kushner by the Senate Intelligence Committee staff today, he was no doubt asked about those final four pages of this form in which his signature is required four times. And this is a form that says, right above the very first place where you put your name, I have read the instructions and I understand that if I withhold, misrepresent, or falsify information on this form, I am subject to the penalties for inaccurate or false statement per U.S. Criminal Code, Title 18, Section 1001. Jared Kushner and Jared Kushner's assistant had never been near a more serious document in their lives than this thing. The only thing close to this is Jared Kushner's tax return, which only has to be signed once. But it is also a federal government document that, if handled incorrectly, can send you to jail. Jared Kushner's assistant now will have to testify about all of this. Jared Kushner's assistant will be asked, did you see those instructions on the first page that warn against withholding information and explains that that is a crime? and that your boss, Jared, could go to jail if you get anything wrong in this thing. Jared Kushner's assistant may then become the Rosemary Woods of this investigation. Rosemary Woods was President Nixon's assistant, whose desk was right outside the Oval Office, and who explained a crucial 18-minute gap in President Nixon's secret voice recording system by saying that she created that erasure of the tape when she was transcribing it, and there she is demonstrating this, tried to answer the phone at the same time. There was absolutely nothing credible in what Rosemary, uh, Rosemary Woods said about that at that time. Tomorrow, Jared Kushner will be under oath testifying to some members of the House Intelligence Committee. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.